Okay, today we're going to cut out <clears throat> some wall art from some old 78 RPM discs. Now these you can pick up at just about any tag sale. Uh, they're still being sold and they're really quite cheap. Sometimes you'll find people just want to get rid of them and give them away. Now there's basically two types. There's this kind here which is a little bit of vinyl in it. Uh, so it's it's pretty secure. I mean, you, you can bang it around and it probably won't break. But there is another type. It's just solid acetate. These are real old ones. And they're very flimsy. If you drop them on the ground, they'll probably shatter. So you want to take extra care with those. We're going to try it today with this uh, partially vinyl one. Uh, it should produce some pretty good results. Now, some of the things you're going to need to, before you get going on this project. Uh, one is you're going to need a pattern of some sort. You can pick up some patterns from my website or you can make your own. I like to make my own of course because then you get to design anything you want to do. And uh, you're going to want to put these on the record later on so you can cut them out. But you'll need some scissors to cut the patterns out first so that they fit on the disc. Uh, you're also going to need a heavy piece of cardboard which you can use for the backing of the disc. You'll see in a little while why you need this. Uh, this will help to uh, keep the disc nice and steady for you. You're also going to need some masking tape and I would suggest you get a good masking tape, something like this frog tape or possibly a painter's tape, something that's good and heavy duty, not the cheap uh, regular masking tape you pick up in your hardware store. You're also going to need a knife of some sort. I use a box cutter, but you can use an X-Acto knife too if you prefer to use that. Now those are the essential items that you're going to need to uh, work on this and to set your uh, disc up for cutting. You're also going to need <clears throat> a little invention of mine, and that's these little handles that are going to be used to maneuver your disc around on the scroll saw. Now, you can move, you can try cutting it this way if you want but it's very difficult to grab this record while you're trying to maneuver it. So what you wanna, you're gonna wanna do is put this down on the cardboard and then we're gonna attach these handles like that so that we can maneuver this thing around on the scroll saw. All right, so we got this pretty well set. The next thing we're gonna do is start to actually set up our record for cutting purposes. Okay, let's get uh, our record <coughs> set up for recording now. Um, what we're going to need to do is tape up all of one side, all, one side of the record to begin with. Uh, we're going to use the green masking tape to do that. What we'll do is we'll peel off some of the tape. We can use the uh, edges as a uh, reference here. So just peel some off. And you want to tape up as much of this record as you can. So we're going to go right to there at that point. Okay. And then we'll take another piece and we'll do the top part. And then we'll do the bottom the same way. Won't bother to wrap them around yet. And we're going to keep the uh, label facing out uh, and uh, top to bottom. You might, if you're going to make up your own label, it really doesn't matter whether the label is correct in position when you do this. And uh, we're going to use uh, this particular pattern, which is uh, born to ride the motorcycle at the top. So we just want to make sure that fits on there okay, and it does. So what we can do flip the record over at this point. Grab it and flip it on over like this. Don't worry about getting dust on it or anything. Clean that up later on. It's going to be part of the cleanup. The cleanup is a little bit difficult after you get this thing cut out. It's worth it to put all this tape on it now. It'll save you a lot of headaches later on. Put this right over the other pieces there. <coughs> same thing on the bottom again. You want to do both sides of the record because you want this to be 
nice and clean when you take it apart later on. Okay, so it doesn't really matter which side we use at the front. I'm going to use this at the back, I think. It's got a few more scratches on the other side. We're going to put this down here on, on the uh, cardboard backing. Take the disc and the uh, box cutter and cut out cut off the excess tape. We don't really need it there, so let's get rid of it if we can. Okay. And then you just do the other side the same way. <clears throat> so cut that right off. And we'll cut this right off. Okay. So now you've got both sides of the disc areas that you're going to be cutting nicely taped up. And we're going to use this as the front, as we said, so we'll put that down, face down, uh, face up on the cardboard. Now the next thing you want to do, take this thing down to the cardboard as such. So take another piece of tape. It's okay if you have a double layer here. It's not a problem. In fact, it would probably be better for you. Now this we want to tape right to the cardboard itself. And the same thing on the bottom. And this you only need to do on one side, obviously. Okay, We've got the whole thing nicely taped up. You want to take any excess tape on the edges here and fold them under, make sure they're nice and flat because you don't want the uh, cardboard to be uh, jamming up on the table because of the sticky tape attaching to it. Okay, so that's how we <clears throat> set up our record ready for cutting. All right. Okay, now we're ready <clears throat> to attach these little handles that I made. Now you can make these very easily. You take a uh, piece of wood, cut it to about, it's, a, it's three quarter inch wood, and you cut it to about two inches long and about one inch wide and you make four of them okay because you need these little handles to maneuver your record around now <clears throat> what you're going to do is attach these with uh, hot glue i neglected to mention this before but you're going to need a hot glue gun to do this if you decide to go this particular route if you really feel comfortable moving the record this way then you don't even need these handles but i find this quite useful and i've used them over and over again as you can see glue starts to accumulate but that's okay you can go to a certain point and then eventually just throw them out and make a new set if you want but you take your glue your hot glue gun and you smear a good amount of glue on the bottom here and you take it and put it on the corner of the cardboard okay so there's one take another one glue it up put this one down in the other corner okay we have two of the corners attached now. Turn your record around. Take another one of these. Glue up the bottom. Attach it nicely to the edge. And you use hot glue because it fastens very quickly. You don't have to wait around for Elmer's glue a couple hours to, before it dries. And you can peel these right off after when you're done. Okay? So the uh, handles are now attached. Right. The next thing we're going to do is attach the patterns. Okay. So you want to take the pattern paper that you have, and cut your patterns out. Now I'm going to go put some glue on these. I'll be back and uh, we'll attach them to the actual record. Okay, I have sprayed the back of the patterns with uh, an adhesive. Uh, you can use a glue stick if you want or whatever method you particularly choose to do, but I prefer the adhesive. So I, attach, I sprayed the back of these and now what I'm going to do is attach them to the record. You just simply line it up with the label if you want to keep that label as your, your decoration. You just attach your glue right to the, uh, you attach your pattern right to the green uh, tape. Okay. And now we take the motorcycle, which we're going to use on the top, and we just put that right down, and 
line it up so that it matches nicely with the words on the bottom. And allow yourself, you know, enough space here because we're going to cut. When we cut this, we're going to cut right in to either edge here and then start to cut out the motorcycle. Okay? Uh, you might want to take a ruler uh, to help you with this. And I'll get mine over here. And you go to the edge of the record, the bottom of the actual motorcycle in this particular case. Take a pencil and just mark it off to that point and mark it off up to this point here which is where your cutoff is going to go. If you want to you can uh, make a fancier design on the side if you want to draw it on. It's up to you. I mean, Nothing really has to be in stone here. You can do any way you want. I think what I'm going to do is uh, dress this up a little bit. I'm going to come in with my cut probably around here and go to the bottom round it over a little bit and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side too I'm going to round it over so it has like a little wall on either side okay okay we're over here at the <clears throat> mini drill press now and uh, what you're going to have to do is drill some entry holes for the blades uh, in the record I use a little Dremel here with a drill bit on it and we'll punch out some of these just so you can get the idea of how this works. Cut right through that record. Got a nice sharp drill. It should be no problem at all. These are the areas you're going to be cutting out. Okay, we have all of the uh, <clears throat> holes that we're going to need drilled out nicely. And uh, I like to drill the holes of the letters near the bottom, if you can, uh, of the letters. Because when you lift this up to put the blade through it, the bottom, uh, it's a little easier to get to them. If you do it further up on the top, it's a little harder. Okay, so that's what you're doing for that part of the uh, project. Okay, now we're going to... Uh, start cutting out the letters. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole uh, record on screen here. I'm going to just a few uh, pieces here just so you get an idea of how I maneuver this around on the edges with the handles. But uh, you can go the whole route when you're done and set to go, of course. Uh, Alright, what well, I've got at the back of the record and I'll start with the letters at the bottom here. I'm going to run my blade up through the hole that I made. Put it down, put the blade in there. The blade is a little stubborn today. There we go. I'm using a number five reverse blade on here. Um, <clears throat> you can use other blades, of course, but uh, I find that this is the best to work with on this particular kind of material. Uh, the reverse blade particularly, I think we'll probably raise this up a little bit, maybe it's down too low. I was cutting some wood before and evidently it doesn't like the way it's set up. All right, we attach this, make it a little bit tighter. Right. Now you wanna turn your speed down to the lowest possible speed. You don't wanna rush this at all. And then you just start your cutting very carefully, very slowly. I'm going to move the uh, lens in a little bit, I think. Be able to see a little better if I get in closer here. Okay, here we go. You can use the edge of the record, of course, but handle comes in very handy to allow you to manipulate this record when you're doing your cutting. Now you 
getting a little bit of uh, gunk coming out from the record, which is not a problem. The blower doesn't really blow it away because it sticks to the record too tightly. That's okay. What you can do is you can stop it every once in a while if you like and just brush that stuff away. <clears throat> and then start up again. Go around your corners, edges, just as if you were cutting it out of wood. The blade hit the inside material and it just pops right out. Okay, so we'll stop at this point, but I'll come back when I get toward the end of the record and uh, we'll continue on with cleanup and getting this thing ready for uh, display. Okay, as you can see, I've cut out most of the uh, image at the top and uh, all of the lettering at the bottom. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do now is take out the top part of the record and make the image really stand out nicely. And as I pointed out before, I'm going to cut along that little line that I started on either side and uh, on the outskirts of the motorcycle itself. So let's begin. <coughs> Start by cutting through the tape and cardboard here. Look at that little loop that I made. Important that you have the tape covering that record, otherwise it would probably have cracked right at this point. Go down a little valley here, going toward the wheel itself. And now we start to cut the wheel out. Try to stay on the line as much as possible. You might have to hold your finger down on part of the image when you're cutting it because it's starting to come loose going to flap a little bit. You don't really want that to happen. <clears throat> this seems to be going along pretty good, though. Okay. So up in front of the motorcycle. And we'll cut out the light area. Again, use your handles to maneuver this thing around. It's much easier than trying to handle a thin disc. The handlebar is kind of thin, so I'm going to cut it a little thicker than it shows on the actual pattern. So that could break off very easily if you didn't make it thick enough. Turn around here, go back the other way. Stop and brush off some of this stuff so you can see how the cut is coming. finger too so that you don't get it in front of the blade if you're holding that down. Now we just go along the top of the motorcycle. improvise on the pattern too as you go along. You see something that needs to be cut off or a little bit thicker or an edge that needs to be rounded over. Be afraid to do it. Once it's done you can't go back. Okay. Going down to the bottom of the tire here now. And we swerve around, go back to the other loop on the other side of the record. Again, into the cardboard. All right, cut that all out. Now we <clears throat> want to take this off of the top. Very carefully, pop that out. Hopefully, without breaking it. There we go. Coming out very nicely. Except for a few stubborn spots. 
paper on the back is holding it. There we go. Okay. You can see we've got this all nicely done now. What we'll do is we'll take it over to the workbench and we'll start the cleanup. Okay, I've peeled off all the tape on both sides. <clears throat> it came out pretty good. Now, as you can see, if you look at it very carefully, you can see the little fuzzies inside here. And it, sometimes you could, you could take a, a little file like this one and go along the insides and just help uh, brush them off a little bit. They're, they're really very loose anyways, but uh, it helps to rub on them with something to help <clears throat> clear up uh, the problem. Now, what I like to do is take a blower, <clears throat> a little hand blower here, and <clears throat> hit them. Now this doesn't take all of them off, but if you rub your fingers on there, <clears throat> and you take a little paintbrush, reach inside there, you can usually get them off pretty easy. And it's important that you take them off because you don't want the thing really looking like a mess. Brush on the end of it to clean up some of it. Let's see if we can take that out and try it. See if that helps at all. Well, that takes off those fuzzies pretty good. Drummer, which speeds things up a little bit. Brush your fingers over it, you do the same thing. Now, what we're going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to take this upstairs where I have a sink available, and I'm going to wash the whole thing down with some warm water, and that will remove more of the fuzzies as well. Okay, we're at the sink right now, and uh, you're going to turn your water on so it's very lightly coming out with warm water. Not too hot, of course, because if it's too hot, it will melt the record down. You don't want that. So, the you you just run the sun underneath the water over the fuzzy there. And it should wash off a lot of the fuzzies so that they come out a lot smoother than they were before. Okay, I think you're doing a pretty good job here. Alright, shut your water off and put your uh, record down on a clean towel area where we can dry it off. Take another towel and just sort of blot it. Don't rub it because if you rub it it will cause the paper to get stuck in between the little crevices here and then you got a bigger job trying to get those out of there. Okay, then do the back the same way. Back is not too important of course because it's going to be against the wall. Okay, that looks pretty dry now, so I think we can take it back to the shop and uh, continue on with the cleanup process. Okay, we're back down in the shop area now, and the record has been all cleaned up, and uh, most of the fuzzies are gone. There's still a few here and there. You want to go over them and clean them out as best you can to make this thing look pretty good. But it doesn't look too bad, even the way it is right now. So we got this all pretty well cut and ready to work on a little more. What we want to do now, I'm going to try something I haven't done before. And that is spray it with a lacquer and uh, give it a little bit of a shine. Now, sometimes I'll clean the record up too a little more. I think we've done a pretty good job so far. But if you put it down and you take uh, some Windex... Uh, and go over it first with the Windex, avoiding the uh, cut areas. You don't want to get it, your paper towel in the cut areas because, uh, as I said before, it will cause uh, 
problem. You'll have all kinds of paper stuck in between the little crevices. If you take this and you just rub it down in the bigger areas, and in between the areas, rub it down nicely, staying out of the crevices if you can, you should be able to come up with a pretty decent looking disc. And of course you can always go over it again with the blower to dry it up a little bit and also to remove any other some more down here okay all right what I'm going to do now is take it over to the paint area and I'm going to give it that spray of lacquer and come back after it dries see what it looks like okay the record has now been cleaned up tape has all been removed put a slight lacquer finish on it give it some more of a shine and this is the finished product now you can do yours.